Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'm Morten, LB0 Fox India. And today we're going to talk about something that I don't really know a lot about, but I'm going to really venture into the next coming weeks. And that's LoRa APRS. And you might remember we did a stream about LoRa and LoRa APRS on the European Ham Radio Show about a year ago. And I went ahead, got a couple of boards, and figured... I get going with this. And then it turned out like Bob LB5JJ said on stream that, well, it's a little bit wider bandwidth than you can use on 70 centimeters in Norway. So turned out that I can use it. I experimented a little bit with boards um, for Meshtastic on 433 megahertz. I didn't really find that useful. So the boards have been lying around in some drawer somewhere. But yesterday, all of that changed because the legislation among bandwidth on 70 centimeters in Norway changed. So we're now allowed to do LoRa on 70 centimeters on a small portion of the band. So I started this morning, first of all, finding where I put those boards because I hadn't really used them for a year. And then flashing them and setting them up for LoRa APRS. And I'm not going to discuss how to set up the boards. I might do that in a later video uh, if you guys like this video and would like to know more about it. But first of all, let's take a look at the hardware I've used and um, what kind of software I've flashed them with. Well, in order to use LoRa APRS, you need, as with regular APRS, a couple of things. You need a tracker or some kind of transmitter that you keep with you and you need an eye gate. And let's start with the eye gate Digipeter board first. Um, I went for a Lilligo uh, Lora 32 board. Um, I'll overlay it here so you can see it and I'll leave some links for it down below so, so you can get one for yourself. The reason I went for this board is because it's ridiculously cheap for something to set up an APRS eye gate and Digipeter on. It does not have a battery, it does not have APRS, but this is going to be the Digipeter that sits in my shack nonetheless. So that's my Digipeter board. And let's move on to uh, the tracker board that I've used. And the tracker board is the all ever present Lilligo T-Beam. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive than um, the uh, LoRa 32 board that I use for the Digipeter, but this board has, first of all, a GPS built in, which is, is really useful when you're going to use it as an APRS tracker. And secondly, there's a slot on the rear there for an 18650 battery, which also makes this a little bit more useful. Um, turn out that my 18650 battery was completely depleted from uh, not having been used for a year and probably been out of power at all. So for this experiment that I did today, I just powered it from power bank though, which is also an option. But the most important thing for the tracker though is, is probably the GPS chip. And there are a lot of ways to this. Um, basically, you can use the same kind of hardware as you use for Meshtastic. You just need the 433 megahertz to 70 centimeters versions of those boards. So you can use a Haltech board if so. And you can use most of the Lilligo boards. And even though I said I wasn't going to show you how to flash it, I'm going to at least show you that it's easy to flash it. Because both the tracker firmware and the Digipeter firmware has a web flasher. So you go in there, you choose your board, you choose the version you want, you choose the COM port, and boom, you're ready to go. Just click flash, and a couple of minutes later, you're good to go. So, how about my test today? Well, my test today was conducted um, pretty simply, though. I um, set up the um, Lilligo LoRa 32 board in the shack, as I said, as a Digipeter eye gate. Um, that's hooked up to my outside antenna. It's a Diamond X50. And I guess it's about 15 meters of RG213 coax going up there, which is not the best thing considering that this little unit puts out about 20 milliwatts. But then again, it's what I had and it gives me somewhat of an impression on how effective this is. And then I took the T-beam out to the core, hooked that up to my, my half-wave antenna on the core with a mag mount. And there's probably about 5 meters of RG58 going 
from the front of the car to the antenna, which is, is on the back of the car. And that is not ideal either for about 20 milliwatts. But again, it's what I had and it's better than having a rubber duck on the tracker inside the car. And I set out for a little bit of a lap around where I live. I started out driving about 10 kilometers uh, south in a terrain which is hilly and wooded. And it turned out that that is not the ideal terrain. I lost coverage to my tracker after about a kilometer. Then I took a little bit of a different route going back and um, about a kilometer from, from my Digipeter, I, I got coverage again. But I figured the terrain going north is a lot more open. So I figured I'd see how much range I could get going north though. So um, I ended up driving about 10, 10 kilometers northbound and um, had coverage all the way, which is really good. Then I lost coverage. So with the setup I have, realistically, the coverage is about, about 10 kilometers. Probably a little bit more if, if you get a line of sight and a lot less if you get a wooded and hilly area. But it shows that you can actually do something with 20 milliwatts. And considering the fact that these boards are so cheap, the Laura 32 board is about $17 over in AliExpress. And seriously though, 70 US dollars for a Digipeter iGate, that is cheap. So that means you can actually deploy these a couple of different places. You need an antenna, you need an internet connection. You can probably get that a lot of places. So it's a little bit like the Meshtastic. It's cheap to deploy. It's cheap to gain coverage. And another option would be to, to up the power. And I don't know the regulations in Norway for maximum power allowed on this. So I, I need to look into that. And that's my final advice for today. Just a little bit of a... I mean, this is just a little bit of a walkthrough on how I did my first steps in LoRa APRS, and I'm going to do more steps, and I'm going to try to improve this and make this a lot better. But my final suggestion is that you read up on the legisl legislation in the country you're in, because this might be legal where you are, and it might not. So do check that out. LoRa takes for APRS 100. 25 kilohertz of bandwidth so make sure you're allowed 125 kilohertz of bandwidth on 70 centimeters besides that get the boards play around there are links down below to the boards hope you like this short little video i mean this video is a little bit different i didn't really show how to do stuff i'm gonna do that in later videos this was just to to give you a little bit of an impression what laura aprs is and perhaps get you interested in testing this because the hardware is so cheap that if enough hams look into this we could get a really good network so go ahead take a look at laura aprs enjoy yourself experiment that's what this hobby is about and i guess that's it for today uh, leave a thumbs up if you like this video, a thumbs down if you didn't like it, that actually helps my algorithm as well. Uh, leave a comment down below, tell me what you would like me to look into for LoRa APRS. And if you want to support the channel, there are, as usual, a couple of options down below. So, see you guys down the bands, see you in my next video, 7-3.